My name is Ken Paris. I'm an economist with the Communications Workers of America. Based in uh, Washington? Washington, Washington. D.C. So Ken, you're, this is your not your first trip to Tunisia. You were here how many years ago? 2002. And traveling over the last nine or ten days uh, post-revolution, what are your impressions, particularly as both someone who was here before, but also as an economist and the, the hopes for the future? Well, emotionally wise, we were in Sidi Bou Said and we ran into a friend of uh, our guide. And Sidi Bou Zid, I believe. Sidi Bou. Sidi Bou, where the revolution started. No. Oh, Sidi Bou Said. Okay. Sidi Bou Said. Okay. Near the beginning of the trip. Ah, trend. yes. Okay. And she was a teacher of cinema to high school and arts. And we asked her how she felt from before the revolution to after. And she said, I'm free, I'm free. I can express myself. I can tell you what I like and what I don't like. And she was just so happy and emotional. So that's a feeling that we didn't see in people in 2002. Everyone was very, very nice in 2002, very, very nice in 2011, but the difference in their freedom of expression and their ability to say what they feel is very, very different and vastly different. Uh, the economy, of course, you want to talk a little about the economy, is having some problems because of lack of tourism, lack of um, trade, especially with Libya, which is the prime trading partner. You can imagine what happens there. And people don't know exactly what's going to happen. But everyone we have met is committed to including as many different groups as possible, as long as they aren't violent, and to have freedom of expression and to see how the elections pan out. Of course, there is some worry about what will happen, what won't happen. There's a risk, and everyone recognizes it. But everyone we met, our sample size was very optimistic. Now, you mentioned uh, concern about violence. Did you get any sense of insecurity or potential violence while you were here? Not at all. I live in Washington, D.C. There are a lot of demonstrations and things like that. I feel safe there, and here I feel as safe. Uh, we weren't here when there were definite demonstrations, but like in Washington, D.C., demonstrations arise and have things like that as part of the democratic process. Well, thank you for sharing with us, Ken. And uh, That's it? No more? Oh, yes, please. If, if there's something else you'd like to tell us, sure, please. Well, just that besides the culture and the uh, democratic process that's emerging, it's marvelous to visit a place that's at the beginning of this process, that you don't get to experience that. We saw many beautiful cultural sites, historical sites, dating back to the Berbers, to the Phoenicians, to the Romans, to the Christian Byzantine, to the Arab, to the Ottoman, to the French, and the whole history is very rich. The culture is very rich, and I would um, urge people to come here for that. And it's a very different uh, Muslim nation with a very strong secular past. Women are not all shrouded in veils. You see women in veils if they want, women in Western clothes if they want. Everyone's free to express themselves like that. You see a lot of Western influence. And lastly, to be here at the dawn of a new process is very special, very unique. People are enthusiastic. They are not taking things for granted, like many in the U.S. do or in Europe do. So I would urge people to come here also for that, because that is a unique opportunity. So you get the history, you get the culture, you get the religion, you get the spiritual. If you're lucky to meet family, you'll see families and meet that. But you also are at a unique period in history. Well, Ken, I think you summed it up beautifully with that. It, it is a, a very special aspect of travel to be able to experience. Uh, you can't go to many countries and be part of a revolution taking place. So, yes, uh, thank you for sharing that with us, and thank you for being here. Thank you for having